So we got half hour before the Western Conference final between RSL versus the Portland Timbers is going to kick off, which is a perfect time for me to do a very quick news of the week episode and the second news of the week episode that I'm going to be doing this week because there's been a lot of news that has happened in the past couple of days. And the first news that we're going to talk about is something that I mentioned yesterday in my Eastern Conference preview where, you know, there was a big question of how many players exactly is in that cover protocol for the philadelphia union well today we found out how many they are and if you're a union fan i got some bad news they have 11 players that is currently in COVID protocol and those 11 players include the likes of andre blake jacob glasness alejandro Badoya, kai wagner and more more on this team and again you know if i would give some silver lining to union fans is that you know as much as i know you a lot of unions fans are saying that this is doom and gloom and that pretty much some even said that you know see you next season it's been a great run in the playoffs remember columbus last year they had a COVID outbreak that had been in the game against nashville and they went on to win that game and i've even said before where you know the union despite the fact that if they are going to be cripple as what we see in this situation they have a really good academy and they also signed a couple of those academy player to be getting ready to play in this game and I, I trust that they they will definitely step up in 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 the biggest game of the season but that being said you know overall this is definitely a monumental task now for the union to o- able to overcome this to to move on to mls cup but you know like like i say you know this might sound like an old saying but it is kind of true you have to play the game you know you you can't just assume the fact that you know and i'm pretty sure nycfc know this too like nycfc fans as much as i know they're they're definitely happy of seeing that they know that you know they should they they shouldn't should not not or at least their players should not just look at this as thinking that it, it should be be an easy run i mean nothing is definitely easy in the playoffs and we've seen before where even when a team that is so decimated like what the union are right now they can somehow pull pull through into the next round so i'm not saying the eastern conference final is decided and i'm not basically crowning the nycfc as the eastern conference champion because again this is why you have to play the game and i won't be surprised if the union does move on into the next round despite the fact that how that they are so so decimated coming into that game now moving on in terms of the next news is that we got a new head coach that has been hired by by one of these teams that is looking for a new head coach heading to next season and that team is fc dallas who they have announced they hired nico estevis as their new head coach now what's also kind of interesting about this hiring is that it seems like fc dallas and the u.s men's national team kind of did a little bit of a trade because you know how how former fc dallas head coach luchi gonzalez and after he he of course was fired a couple of months ago well it seems like you know even though dallas kind of fired him what they secretly decided to do is just kind of give luchi gonzalez to the u.s men's national team and and become a new assistant head coach there and in exchange for that um nico estevez was actually the assistant head coach for greg berhalter for the u.s men's national team and now he's he's the head coach of fc dallas and in some way i think this kind of works out for both both of uh, of them going going into different direction because you know nico estevez besides the fact that he's a an assistant head coach for the u.s men's national team he's also spent a long time with valencia especially in in with the youth academy and knowing the fact that fc dallas is a team that love to play their kids and do trust their academy the most it makes perfect sense that they hire a head coach that has experience in the youth development level and that i think this should be a right fit for them but also for luchi gonzalez you know for all this time he's been been the the u.s youth national team or actually well i wouldn't say actually i'm thinking of of a different different guy i'm thinking of, of tap ramos who was the the head coach of the youth national team but you know for luchi gonzalez he's been been, been a youth national team coach of, of one of the best if not the best academy in in the league that is fc dallas and you know the, with the way that the u.s men's national team have a lot of these young town they need to have a head coach that have that youth development background or at least good at working in with with these these young kids on the pitch and lucia gonzalez is definitely the one one to do so and yeah overall like i said it should work out for for both of of the these people going to to a new position in their job now moving on in terms of the next news is that Atlanta united is reported to finalize the transfer of tiago amandra 
for $16 million from Vela Sarsfield. So in the last News of the Week episode, I talked about Atlanta and how I couldn't quite remember who exactly they, they signed signed during the summer transfer window that they, of course, are going to be making it per permanent heading into next year. Well, I got the answer. It was Siako Amandra, although I think I kind of said that that was, that was his name. I might have said the the wrong, wrong name in that video, but nevertheless, you know, I, I was thinking about him coming to Atlanta, although I didn't think that, you know, that transfer wasn't actually finalized. I mean, I thought when they were report to sign, sign him in the summer, I thought that that deal was done and that he would join the team as soon as, as next month. But it seems like that that transfer, well, actually not next month, but, you know, fe February of 2022 as what is being reported. But it seems like they just got to have to get some some finalization that is going on. Though I will say this, there has been some mixed reaction in the Atlanta United fan base. You know, some Atlanta fans are happy the fact that they're, they're seeing their club flexing the muscle to the rest of the league and just kind of kind of just show the rest of the league that yeah they are an ambitious club they will spend as much money as possible to get get the the best player possible or in this case a guy that they they know that is 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 one of the the best young talent down in south america but also there are some atlanta united fans especially the support their group for atlanta united is not happy with with the signing and a lot of that has to do with the fact that there seems to be some trouble background with with him and that there was kind of like some racial kind of discrimination incident that he has i mean it, it's been all all report i'm not sure sure if it exactly is true and not to mention the fact that you know he is arriving for 16 million dollar and that this is atlanta united once again again really hoping that they can develop this good young town and eventually sold them off off a profit but it just also gets to a point where you know it's good the fact that you eventually will so, sell a player for a profit but it gets harder if you decide to buy him for such a big amount of prices i mean i remember when they decided to sign pity martinez for a huge sum of money and that they didn't really develop him very well and it, it never really live up to the price tag that they they pay river play for for him and you know eventually they did sell him all for a good sum of money I think it was like 17 million dollar but it was not and when you look at the price that they they bought him and the price that they sold it's kind of almost at break even point and that's not something that Atlanta United want to do they want to be a team team that can sell a, a player all for a profit and more than they bought and you know unless if they really develop Thiago Mantra like a M Miguel Almiron from a couple years ago yeah you know they, they, they this is a huge price tag to pay and in some way they, they better hope that he he works out and he's not going to be like pity martinez or in some extent ezekiel barco because i remember they paid barco 15 million dollar and it took them so long until this year to finally develop him to a really good good talented player which speaking of which uh for ezekiel barco there's definitely rumors that he could potentially go to europe and there's even a rumor talk about he could even go to Boca Jr. and it's going to be interesting to see how much Atlanta is going to sell him off because I'm assuming it's not going to be anything less than 15 million dollar like Atlanta is going to definitely de demand some more money and you know as much as Ezekiel Barco kind of started to finally live up to his price tag this season I still think that you know that you know is he worth of a a player that can be sold off for 15 million dollars uh, I, I don't know but either way i think he could be be potentially on his way out of atlanta because you know with tiago mantra coming in all uh, that means they have four dp in in their roster and if you know the rules in mls you cannot have four dp unless you're the la galaxy which for some reason anytime when the galaxy has 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 more dp or not the, the league trying to maybe find a way to 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 kind of bet bend the rule kind of in favor of them and maybe they'll do the same thing with Atlanta United because I know some people have said Atlanta has all has become a, a darling of MLS and you know the league will try trying to find ways to kind of help them out but other than that you know they still need to figure out the situation of how they can get get uh, themselves down back to to just free DP now uh, Montreal of course have signed Lassie Lampinainen on a permanent transfer for Bologna. Now I don't think there was a lot of because technically Montreal and Bologna they're kind of like parent club and it's you know owned by the same owner in Joey Saputo. But you know in terms of the signing I think it's a decent signing. You know Lassie Lampinainen I know this season he hasn't had as good of a season as he hit, he had when he first came into the league. But there's no doubt that there is definitely ta talent in him and that. 
I, I think I think he'll get another shot shot next year, and especially with the way way that you know he, he's going to try to fight for his starting spot back after he lost that that competition to Romel Kyoto. So we'll see whether or not if if he can do it next season. Now the Columbus Crew, of course, have re-signed Eloy Rome room to a contract through 2023 and this is just a couple of days after they announced that they have re-signed Lucas Zyrian to a new contract and you know this shouldn't be a big surprise you know Columbus locking King their their most influenced pl player to a long-term term contract you know you know with a room of how he is definitely considered one of the best goalkeeper maybe even in some way one of the most underrated goalkeeper in the league it's a no-brainer for the crew to lock Lock down a new contract for their new goalkeeper. Now, uh, the Colorado Rapids have signed Michael Barrios to a one-year contract extension. And you know, Michael Barrios is, is a guy guy that remember how how when the Rapids basically got Michael Barrios for for I believe I'm think they they got him for free and that they didn't really pay FC da Dallas for a lot of money. Yeah, people forget that this might be one of the best deals that we saw saw last last off season because you know with ha the season that Michael Barrios has had with the Rapids he looked like he he has turned back the clock and looked like the Michael Barrios that we saw saw a couple of years ago from FC Dallas being a very dynamic make a uh, attacker and not just a guy that just solely rely on his speed to kind of bur burn defender but now at last season he has shown that he can definitely score some some goals and being the leading goal scorer of this Colorado Rapids team now of course, they the Rapids only signed him to a one-year contract extension mainly because of the fact that you know he is started to getting up to that age, and they hope that you know maybe he'll have another good season like he he has with with the the Rapids last year. But I think this is just kind of another signing and another player that you know just kind of explain why the Rapids uh, this season finished finished and in in first place in the Western Conference. And if you ignore the fact that they of course got knocked out in the first round. You know, this is a team that they just find ways to sign some some hidden gems out out there and kind of fit fit them in a roster. And little did we know that they they would actually be coming the team that finished top of the Western Conference. Now, uh, the Chicago Fire has re-signed Wyatt Almsberg to to I believe a either a one-year contract or a multi-year contract. I didn't actually actually read the article too much into it, but it's another signing that kind of makes sense because you know Wyatt Almsberg. I'm glad that he's finally getting a chance for an MLS team because you know he has been a guy that's been been sitting on the ben bench for Minnesota and that when the Loons did let go of Wine Almsberg, you know I w wasn't that disappointed because I feel like he needs to, to get some some game time and he could definitely be a good decent defender and he definitely showed that last year with the Chicago Fire being very decent in in his position and again no surprise that the Chicago Fire decided to re-sign him to a new contract. Now, the Houston Dynamo is reported to tr try to sign former LA Galaxy midfielder Jonathan Dos Santos. Now, I'm not sure exactly if this is going to just be a TAM contract, contract that they, they of course, are going to sign him. And if they, they are, then, yeah, I think that kind of makes sense. Although, you know, Jonathan Dos Santos last year, he did not have a good season with the Galaxy. And in some way, he started to kind of become a little bit like his, his brother, uh, Gio, that just as the his age one winds down he has definitely started to to decline in ter terms of it, his importance and that you know i think thing if he does go to the dynamo i think it's a good good depth piece in terms of the midfield however you know i, I talk about about this houston dynamo team where you know i feel like this if they do so sign him and especially if they don't sign him to a tam contract and make him a dp that would be a huge mistake, and they basically would just learn nothing from what what they did in the first two years, which is trying to maybe be get a couple of placeholder and a couple of, of filler gap kind of player into it, and just delay the the inevitable rebuild when it is pretty clear that they clearly need to to do a rebuild. But like I said, you know, if they do sign him to to a TAM contract and nothing kind of major, then I think it's it's a decent signing to. To ha have a good placeholder and have that veteran present in the midfield, but if it is anything but a TAM contract, this could be a really bad bad signing for the Dynamo. So see whether or not if that is going to be the case. But now moving on in terms of the next news, and unfortunately got some bad bad news for for Minnesota and certainly for for me to to see that Patrick Wayne has officially 
actually undergo ACL surgery after, of course, he suffered a torn ACL. And now I think this kind of makes sense why Patrick Way has not been playing for the Loons down down the stretch because he was suffering from from a torn ACL. But yeah, he is undergoing the the surgery this off season, which means he's probably not going to be coming back until late in 2022. It's such a shame to to see him him not come come back until then because he's a very young young ta- the player that uh, I thought it was kind of criminal the fact that he's not he didn't get as much game time as I hope he would get and when he does those get game time he looked like he he definitely had that raw ability to be a de- decent attacker for this Minnesota team but again you know with him him now undergoing ACL surgery they're most likely he's not going to be be coming back till 2022 and even then you know by then if the loons does have have some good striker option i won't be surprised they might decide to cut ties with with patrick way and and again it's just such such a shame the fact that you know you know we couldn't really quite develop him in a good good way and now unfortunately he's going to be out out for alert for long term and it's going to definitely damage it his, his his potential to be a very decent player but speaking of another decent young young attack, attacker, uh, Caden Clark, of course, he is going to be going to RB Leipzig. But there is a a sense that he might not actually be be playing for RB Leipzig, but actually going to be going on loan, uh, because they have just said that he is actually going to just do a trial with RB Leipzig, and and RB Leipzig will decide whether or not they're going to keep him or maybe loan him to somewhere else. I feel like most likely they're going to loan him to somewhere else, mainly because you know I've. Also heard the news that Jesse Marsh looks like he's in serious trouble with RB Leipzig. Like after the the form that this team ha- has been been in, it looks like Jesse Marsh could be fired from that job. And if Jesse Marsh does get fired from RB Leipzig, then yeah, whoever the next head coach is going to be, even if Kane Clark is going to stay stay there with the team, he's probably not going to play him. Like if Jesse Marsh was still with RB Leipzig and Kaden Clark basically comes in, then I have a feeling Marsh would would want to to play Caitlin Clark or at least give him some minutes there. But again, I just feel like he, most likely he is going to be loaned out to somewhere else. And it's good, the fact that he will be loaned out to somewhere else because he needs game time. And when you're a young young player, especially a young, talented player like Caitlin Clark has, who I really think, think down the line he could definitely be a future U.S. men's national team player. But in order for him to, to, to fulfill his town, he needs some game time. And let's just hope, hope, hope that, you know, he... He will will get some if he does join with RV Leipzig or get loaned out to another team. But there you have it. That is pretty much it for the news of the week. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of these news and if there's any news that I didn't miss from the past couple of days. Let me know in the comments below. But like I said before, you know, this is going to be something that's going to be very co- common once the offseason begins where I'm going to do two news of the week episode in a single week and again the reason why i'm doing it this week is that we just had so much news that happened in the past couple of days that i just could not wait until wednesday to talk about it but until then hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time